Hello, my beautiful star family. We have some tremendous energy that a lot of us are feeling right now, and I wanted to address a couple of things, but also primarily the reason why I'm doing this video is to let you know that tomorrow is our soul circle Q and A. So please just check in the link below if you don't have the link to join in live on the zoom this is a live zoom call so that we have the opportunity to share sacred space together so that you can ask questions live so that we can just really dive into a lot of what we're all experiencing right now so this is our monthly soul circle live q a so again just check the link down below if you'd like to join in it's tomorrow sunday and all the details are just going to be right there below also, this soul circle is very, very special because we were on the road for the last soul circle and I didn't have the items on me, but I did not forget that this year is the year of the sacred um, gift giving. So I do have this soul circle, two gifts that I'm going to be giving. And so within that, I'll be revealing what those are tomorrow in our soul circle. I have two gifts that, so there'll be two winners from uh, the soul circle, whomever's live in that event, I'll be pulling from a raffle of whoever's there. And I have some really beautiful gifts I'm looking forward to, to passing on to you. So within that, I am going to also just uh, remind you that if you want some extra support during what's going on right now, I am available. If you feel like a one-on-one -on -one might be a really great way to get a little bit of clarity, we could look at it either through star alignments, maybe seeing if there's something particular influencing, or if you would just like some one-on-one -on -one to help maybe learn some different um, skills or tools or some ways in which to process some of the energy or just to have an outside energy helping anchor space for with your higher self to get a little bit of a clear understanding of what is going on. I would be so happy to be here with you for that. Uh, aside from that, just a beautiful reminder is that there is the Trinity online courses. I am going to update the links on the website because I know um, some of you are saying it seems a little bit hidden. And so little by little, I'm always trying to make everything as accessible, simple, and easy as possible because there is just way too much other energies that are <laughs> just kind of a bit for us to even stay focused or in our body sometimes right now. So within that, um, if you go on to withbecca.com on the top, there's a link that says online courses and there's three amazing courses on there right now. If you wanted some personal assistance that kind of gives you a day to day, something where you could click on videos, uh, be able to hear maybe some beautiful techniques, uh, courses, lessons that will help take you a little bit deeper into the understanding of your soul, your life's purpose, the journey of your blueprint, all of that is available there for you. All right, so within that, I just want to say that for those of you, especially since the eclipse, I'm hoping that you got to do a lot of sacred fire ceremony throughout that process. This was something that was just so magical. In fact, yesterday I was able to go out to the sacred fire pit where I, bu I burned a fire every night or I'll just say every day because um, sometimes I did the fire during the day, but I did a fire every day between the uh, lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. So for a two week period, I was doing that. And I want to just put this out as an invitation for you because that is a really great thing to do. You don't need an eclipse to do it. Um, you don't even need to do it for a two week period. But if you could, utilizing the lunar cycle between the new moon and the full moon, this is a really special time because basically every single fire was a fire of connecting to the divine of meditation, mantras, prayers, everything um, that was so sacred was being brought to the fire as well as all of the things that were being released, all of the things that were being let go through the sacred fire. So within that, it's really special to understand that if you're burning sage, palo santo, sacred herbs, um, I had piles of lavender. I'm actually excited to grow a lot of lavender this next uh, summer season so that I'll have a lot for next time. But uh, lavender, um, sacred things and gifts that you want to give to the fire. So now it's very sacred experience more so 
um, than just the experience of you being there in that moment, the way that it perpetuates is that at the end, so this is what I did yesterday, at the end you can collect all of the ashes. So I went through and I collected all the ashes. I cleaned it all up and I gathered all of the ashes. I sifted through. So any of it that still maybe was a little bit larger chunk. So let me just say I was a little bit <laughs> ashy. I had, <laughs> I had ash all over me. I had charcoal all over me, but it was just incredible. And I took all that sacred ash and within that, it now becomes a gift for the etheric realm. It now becomes a gift for the elementals. It now becomes a gift for the spirits of nature. So I took that ash and I, gif I gifted it back in ceremony to the trees, to different plants, to the earth. Each one was about connecting to the spirits of the tree, the spirits of the plants, the spirits of wherever I gifted it back to the earth. It is a beautiful sacred ceremony as a follow-up to take that ash and give it back to the earth because now it's infused not only with a really great um, uh, element that gives back to the soil, but it's also spiritualized in the sense that it is, it is just another gift giving of that energy. So I did that yesterday and within that there has been a lot of transmissions that have been coming through from the guides and i'm looking forward to sharing that with you tomorrow at our q a soul circle because it's a bit of a discourse it's a bit of a download if you will if you want to look at it that way of a transmission of wisdom that the guides have been sharing but within that i will just say this because i know a lot of us have been feeling like how do i stay in my body how do i function in this reality i have been noticing so many things in the town where i live um that are different like feels like a completely other parallel reality or place and there it's subtle some of it and some of it's like whoa that is completely different even to the effect of certain places having completely different individuals where they're like no everything's been the same here and you go in and it's like every single individual is an individual that is different um, and I could definitely dive into this more but I mean I am catching what many might refer to as Mandela effects but on a massive level and this is really an affirmation for me for what the guides were bringing through previously as they were stating that as we are going through this acceleration of photonic energy part of what we're going through is that acceleration of that photonic light or that level of acceleration of consciousness within ourselves. and as we continuously expand where we choose to exist so consciousness isn't just about uh, what we're thinking about, or let me see how I would put this. Consciousness isn't just about a level of what we have attained or spirituality, but it's literally a description of where are we existing. So if our consciousness accelerates to a higher spectrum frequency, then it's like we're existing in another plane of existence. And one thing that I think we mistake many times is this idea that we think, oh, well, if I'm moving into from the third to the fourth or to the fifth dimension, then I'm just moving into another level of consciousness. But the truth is, is that as we move into these other levels of consciousness or dimensions, they're actually different locales. They're different places is how I have really perceived them. Not much different than if we imagine the elemental, the spirit, the deva, the fairy realms. These are real realities. And you have to click and match your consciousness to that channel, so to speak. And when you do, there's ways that you can get pulled through the portal and into that world. And these are worlds that might seem completely invisible to others, but when you know how to match it, when you know how to find it, you get moved into it and it's not imagination. These are real locales. And so if we were to imagine that as we are moving into different levels of consciousness, we're kind of in an in-between zone. Think of it kind of like 
um, a little bit of sleep, but a little bit awake, right? You're neither here nor neither there. And that's a lot of what this transition feels like for us. So one thing that I would invite, and this is just a thought because we're all learning how to deal with this together. But one of the things that guides have said is that we need to anchor ourselves in our world. So even if you're going out and driving, going to the grocery store, uh, interacting with different things that um, that still we interact with in order to maintain in this reality, that you want to take your world with you. And if others don't match, it's okay. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, yesterday, I had to go run some errands. I um, had a dental cleaning, and then I decided to run up to Costco to get something and, you know, driving about in these different places it was wild because i was in my field but it felt like um sometimes we think of this as a fishbowl feeling but it was not disassociation it was not an unhealthy limbic system response it was just a feeling of being in another in another world and so it took a lot more effort to really click with certain individuals and if it was necessary. So say at the dentist's office, that was kind of necessary. But sometimes when, when we are driving, when we are moving into places, as I moved throughout Costco to grab the couple things that I needed, there was a sense within that space that I felt as though others were moving around, but it was almost like being invisible, like not being in the same reality until I got to one particular individual. And this individual, we made eye contact. And when we made eye contact, all of a sudden, it felt like clarity happened. And it was actual eye contact. It wasn't just surface interaction, going through the motions, making the, the simulation look correct, right? It wasn't just going through the motions. There was an actual moment of literally being on the same wavelength and bandwidth of this individual that we saw each other in the same world. And there was a completely other feeling like being in the same space all of a sudden. Kind of what we might have thought before as being normal <laughs> back in the day when we were more grounded in, in, in our body and it didn't feel as disconnected in this reality. So that's just an offering of a thought within there, um, getting to recognize that a lot of times we're feeling more inspired to stay at home or stay within our, our set places. Because as we travel, it feels very unsettled and different. Like we're in another planet, we're in another reality. And part of what the guardians are saying is that we literally are, there is a, a bifurcation that is happening as we are watching a whole bunch of individuals go around their work, go about the, their life and do their world, but they feel almost like disconnected, foreign, like you're not even the same reality as they are. And that is absolutely true is what they're saying. They're saying we are not really in the same reality, but we're still close enough within spectrum of frequency that we can see into each other's worlds. And so our job is to really start to allow ourselves one, to connect more and more and more to the guardians, more and more to your higher self, your guardian team, your spirit team, anchoring in because these transmissions and these connections are also, our veils are getting thinner for that connection too, right? So we're really in this in-between state that we can see kind of through all these windows of reality right now. And your job really is to anchor into the reality that you're choosing to be in. And this is, again, an offering of a way to look at it. And if you have other ways that you're perceiving it, I would love to hear what your guides have been telling you. Because this is basically something that we're all going to learn for, from each other of how to go <laughs> through transition on an ascending planet. Because one of the messages that the Guardians, I think, brought through for a lot of us was that Earth herself as a conscious being is choosing ascension and she is coming to a completion of a cycle of of offering her services in the way that she has for a lot of the evolving species and a lot of the polarities and she's choosing ascension again and as that happens that means that a lot of the beings that don't resonate with her as she's ascending 
are going to eventually, when they drop the body, have to find other planetary systems or other places that will resonate with their, their vibration. Likewise for us, right? And I say us because, you know, basically every individual is an individual. Where your level of consciousness is dictates where you are existing. And where you are existing is what determines where your soul travels, what plane of existence your soul travels on, and where you will potentially incarnate in again next. And if we're not holding consciousness, say, at our higher self level or at our soul council level or at our Buddhic realm or Christic realm level, then how do we expect to end up in a reality like that in a next incarnational cycle if we're not even focused on moving in that direction now. So that is one of the things they're saying is focus on the world, the reality that you exist in now. Hold that vibrational energy no matter where you travel, no matter what you do, take it with you. There is going to be sometimes an, uh, because there's a blending of worlds, an energy that it'll feel like you agitate people, that you upset people, or that they get annoyed with why you're so happy or smiling or who you are. And that's okay. Just just see it as part of the merging of worlds or realities out there and that again the only thing that is your responsibility is maintaining your world your orb your level of consciousness what are you aligning to what are your values and where do you choose to go this is this is all free will this is all choice there is a huge impulse for all of us that it's not just about fate anymore we do have the right to rewrite contracts to reset things and for all intents and purposes to step off the reincarnation wheel so with so much love i wanted to put this little message out there because i'm really looking forward to tomorrow uh, these Soul Circle Q&As are, are such a joy for me to get to connect with all of you. So please, again, check the link below. If you'd like to join in live, I'd love to be able to connect with you there. If not, by all means, you'll get to catch the replay later if you are guided. And with so much love, again, I am here and the courses are here. If you'd like a little added uh, uh energy in your life to help you at this time begin to navigate these changing realities. So with so much love, I will see you at our next video.